Oh, greetings. I'm Forrest Wells, District Superintendent of the Southeast District, and uh, I'm here at Whitefish Bay United Methodist Church and so grateful for uh, Pastor uh, Matt Hadley and the staff for uh, allowing me or helping me to uh, record a sermon today. Uh, this is August 26th, and this sermon will be available for clergy congregations to uh, use in case a clergy person might want a vacation uh, week. I'm happy to be uh, at your church uh, today. Well, uh, this has been a very eventful week, and so I'll be focusing on some of the events of, of this week, but uh, hopefully the message is more uh, eternal and will uh, last at least throughout September. So the question for the message today will be, uh, what now? Uh, what now? In the midst of uh, pandemic and uh, racial strife, what now? Before I begin, though, let's pray. Gracious God, uplift my spirit now that I might uplift thee, and may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and redeemer. Amen. I'd like to uh, share a few verses from uh, John chapter 4. Now, by the way, if you get a, a good close-up and you can see the word Cedar Crest uh, on my shirt, it's not the ice cream company. Uh, one of our ministries in the Southeast District in Janesville is Cedar Crest. It's a continuum of care a facility with independent living, assisted living, uh, uh, memory care, uh, care center. So uh, we go uh, far and wide in the ministry of the United Methodist Church uh, throughout the Milwaukee area and the whole Southeast District. Now from John uh, chapter 4 and beginning at verse 3. Jesus left Judea and started back to Galilee, but he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob was there, Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Because Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it was that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. May God bless the reading of this word. Well, years ago, uh, there are a couple of illustrations from one of my favorite preachers that will, will probably you'll hear uh, during the course of this message today. Uh, the first one is from Tony Campolo, and uh, many years ago, uh, he, he has led many mission trips to, uh, to Haiti, and he was in Haiti, and he uh, found a restaurant in the city to uh, go and eat. He sat down at the restaurant, and uh, he was next to the window that looked over the street. And suddenly he saw uh, a young person, uh, young children, coming up to the window, pressing their faces against the window, hungry little children. When the waiter saw what was going on, uh, he rushed uh, to the window and pulled down the blind. Why? So that there wouldn't be discomfort at seeing the unjust, impoverished, starvation environment of the city streets. Well, friends, we have been pulling down the blind of our hearts in many ways throughout a long period of time. The invitation today is to not pull down the blinds of the human needs and hurts that are all around us. Now, these days, it's uh, very difficult uh, to get away from the news. We have uh, COVID virus. We have the virus of racism. We have poverty and inequality, and we could just fill in the blanks of everything that's going on and wrong in the world. And it's hard to get away. Maybe sometimes we need a break from the news. I, I know I sure do. But I think the Lord's invitation is for us not to ignore, but rather to be active and involved in caring for the needs and hurts of the world. In fact, uh, we can't get away George Floyd's uh, murder, death by the hands of police. Jacob Blake just 
uh, a couple of days ago, uh, Brianna Taylor. We are thrust in the United States at this time uh, with the realization that the uh, in, inequities of our world, of our country, have caught up to us in some very real ways. Now, of course, there's always been inequity, injustice. There's always been prejudice and jealousy and hatred. Always, and I mean from the beginning of time. The first murder uh, killing recorded in the Bible is the story of Cain and Abel. Jealousy is part of our human condition. So what now? What are we called to do now? A few weeks ago, I wrote a, a devotion. Uh, and the devotion uh, focused on the word amusement and how amusement is the opposite of the word muse. To muse is to meditate, to think, to ponder. As people of faith, I believe that we're called to ponder our world setting and to ask ourselves, what is it that we can do? What is it that the church is called to do in these times? What now? Perhaps it's as simple as Micah 6, 8. To do, uh, to do justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly with God. Well, those words are easy to say, but much harder to do. How do we do justly? Well, it can start on a personal level. One of the uh, sermons that I remember back to high school, and I, and I don't know if any of you remember your high school sermons, actually it was even before that, in middle school, was the associate pastor, Bill Schwein, down in Indianapolis, Indiana, and the uh, eldest son of the senior pastor, John Stroh, and they had a sermon where they didn't talk. It was all a, uh, an acting uh, vignette. And it started out that they were friends. And then something went wrong with their friendship. And they started to build wall between them. And the wall was higher and higher till finally they were completely separated from one another. And then there was a, a point of time in the vignette where they recognized their own loss of relationship with one another. And so they worked to then break down the wall that they themselves had built. Well, we have built many walls, individually and as society. We built uh, walls of stereotypes and prejudice, assumptions, judgments, walls built by fear that separates us from uh, individuals, separates us from whole communities. It can be an individual uh, separation of a, uh, of a neighbor uh, who just won't cut their lawn the way I'd like to have mine cut, you know, or uh, the, the, uh, an argument about the fence boundaries. There's so many ways that we can have personal disagreements with one another. But there's also uh, the, the, the stereotypes that abound. One interesting discussion that you may want to have uh, with your, your friends or people around the church is, what has been your experience of race? You know, no one likes to be called a, a, a racist, uh, especially when we, uh, we don't think that we are, or we're not uh, prejudiced, we don't think. But we can say that as we've been isolated in one community or another over time. So it might be interesting simply to have a discussion of what is your experience of race in this world. Uh, the clergy in the Southeast District of the United Methodist Church, we meet occasionally. Uh, uh, for a while it was weekly, now a little bit uh, less, and we've engaged each other about the challenges of the uh, pandemic and then uh, the challenges now uh, that have lifted up with uh, racism and other justice issues uh, right around us. One of our uh, pastors, a uh, pastor of color, uh, indicated that uh, for her, transformation of the heart is the key. Of course, we can work for social change. We need to work for uh, equity in our sh social structures and systems. But unless there is a willingness within ourselves as individuals to engage and, yes, to love, uh, that social uh, action, laws, will not change our human hearts. And then uh, this week was the tragic death 
of Jacob Blake. And in the midst of the tragedy, his uh, mother, Julia Jackson, shared some words. She said, you know, the, the damage, she's referring to the damage of, uh, of property and, and lives in Kenosha uh, as a result of uh, uh, protests and uh, 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 people that were you know, just really angry about uh, what they saw as a totally unjust, unwarranted uh, shooting in the back of uh, Jacob Blake. But she said, damage to the community does not reflect my son and my family. And she continues, if Jacob knew what was going on, the violence and destruction, he would be very unpleased. So I'm really asking and encouraging everyone in Wisconsin and abroad to take a moment and examine your heart. So we're encouraged not to pull down the blind, not to just amuse ourselves and forget what's going on in the world. We are called to engage our world to work for justice, mercy, And in the process of walking humbly with God, we need to reflect and meditate about our own part in the complexity of the human condition. And to do so, we really need a word from the Lord. Because I don't think that it's possible for uh, for me to overcome uh, internal prejudices all alone. It's not possible for me to uh, examine myself and to uh, sometimes admit the weaknesses that I have in my relationships with other people or even other communities. It takes a word from the Lord. So that's why I lifted up this uh, passage from the book of John uh, today. Jesus uh, has uh, come, he's traveling, he's in the midst of, uh, for him, uh, a foreign land. Well, it wasn't a foreign land for Jesus, but uh, for the traditional uh, Jewish community at the time, uh, Samaria and the Jewish community just did not interact at all. And so he's passing through. It's a shortcut uh, from uh, Jerusalem to Judea. He pauses, and he's by a well, what's called Jacob's well, uh, on the property given to Joseph. So uh, the underlying story here that can't be seen is that Joseph is of the same lineage then of Jesus. Joseph's fruitful life, the lineage leads to Jesus. Joseph, who was the shepherd and caretaker and foundation of his family, the people of Israel, now Jesus is that, that, uh, that stone, that foundation for all the world and the shepherd of the people. Now here he is in a foreign land, Samaria, sitting down, and this uh, woman comes, in the middle of the day, indicating that uh, probably her her reputation wasn't all that good. She came at a time where people wouldn't be talking about this this woman, this sinner. And there was Jesus, and Jesus asked her for some water. And that shocked the woman. What are you doing asking me, a woman, and a Samaritan for water? That's just not done. We don't have anything to do with each other. And so the story Uh, begins to uh, continue where uh, after conversation, after statement, after statement, uh, Jesus helps this uh, woman understand herself and understand the power of God. If you would just ask me for water, then you would have water uh, abundantly. That's uh, an amazing statement and encounter uh, by uh, Jesus. The uh, interesting thing uh, to me is if we went back to uh, Genesis uh, 49, 22, we could uh, look and see that, uh, that the well or the, the bow of Jesus, the branch of Jesus, uh, went over the wall. It's an indication that Jesus' own life uh, was about uh, going beyond the bounds of what was customary, a custom. Put it in another way, uh, there was not prejudice with Jesus. There was a a universal treatment of uh, love and mercy and respect and power. 
And just a little encounter with Jesus, just a few minutes with this woman, changed her whole life. And pretty soon, she was the evangelist. This sinner of a woman that had had five husbands and that was with somebody else that wasn't her husband, she suddenly became the evangelist because her life was transformed. Now, one application for me is that I need to spend more time with Jesus. Maybe if I would spend more time in prayer, in meditation, in contemplation of the scriptures, more time with Jesus, maybe my heart would be transformed in such a way that my life could make even more difference in addressing the needs of our world today. Maybe if I spent more time with Jesus and less time looking at the, uh, the TV, you know, all the news channels, comparing all the horror stories, seeing how bad everything was, and saying, woe is me, what could I do? Maybe if I was spending some more time with Jesus, my life would be impacted and empowered in such a way to truly make a difference. And that's what I want, don't you? I want my life to mean something, to amount to something. I want to love people who maybe I thought were unlovable. I want to have the grace and mercy exemplified by the life of Jesus. In fact, I want to be the type of, uh, uh, of pastor that is like, well, another T Tony Campolo story. For those of you that uh, don't know him, a, a Baptist preacher, uh, a professor, uh, former professor at uh, uh, university. So uh, he was uh, out in a city uh, uh, late one night. He was traveling. He couldn't sleep, and so he got up and uh, went down uh, to a local uh, kind of cafe uh, two, three o'clock in the morning. And the only people that were there at that time were kind of the street people. And uh, there came to be what he recognized as, well, this must be a group of women of the night, of prostitutes that were, were there. And as uh, they were uh, breaking up, somebody had uh, made uh, the comment that, uh, uh, that one of the women was going to have a birthday the next day. And so Tony came up with a big idea. Well, why don't we have a birthday party for uh, this prostitute named Dolores? And so they organized. We're going to show up at the same time, 3 o'clock in the morning uh, tomorrow, and we'll have a birthday party for this prostitute named Dolores. So the next day, uh, Tony shows up, shows up with a cake, and uh, the people are gathered around, and suddenly uh, she comes in, they light candles, they sing happy birthday, and she's stunned. Dolores is standing there, stunned, and with a tear running down her cheek. I don't think that's the Lord calling. Running down, uh, the tears running down her cheek, and uh, Dolores said, can I take the cake home? Of course, people were around wanting uh, to have a piece of the cake themselves, but uh, no, Dolores wondered, why? I have never had a birthday party before. I have never had a birthday cake before. So, wow, incredible. And then uh, finally, uh, people were asking, well, Tony, uh, you know, who are you? What do you do? And, you know, well, I'm a, I'm a preacher. I'm a pastor. And, well, what kind of a pastor are you? What kind of a church do you have? He said, I pastor a, a church that has birthday parties for prostitutes in the middle of the night. You see, Jesus' love knows no bounds. Amazing love. And if I can spend more time with him, maybe my heart will be so overfilled that I can engage the problems of the world, the viruses of the world, with more power. So I invite you also then to, oh, touch the hem of Jesus' garment, to sit down with him by the well, to tell him your troubles, your sorrows, so allow him to touch your heart so that you too can be empowered for greatness. So as we close, three things. Don't pull the, down the blinds to hide yourself from the realities of the world. Secondly, examine yourself. 
meditate about who you are and how you engage the challenges of the world around you. And then trust. Talk to Jesus. Share your heart. You know, Jesus was pretty tired sitting by the, the well. I bet you're tired. I'm tired of wearing masks. I'm tired of staying home alone. I'm tired of being isolated. But Jesus in his tiredness, he still saved at the well. He still delivered at the well. He still blessed at the well. May you and I be fountains of blessing for the world around us. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you so much for your wonderful love for us and the gift of life and for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who came not only to be an example, but to infuse us with your Spirit, your Holy Spirit of love and grace and mercy to empower us to do justly, to love mercy, to love people, to walk humbly. Thank you for all those who are uh, with us today and bless them, touch them, and use us, God, for your goodness here and around the world. We pray in Jesus' name, amen.